14, 2020. May you all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Pledge of Allegiance, Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. To the Republic for which all men stand, one nation, one nation, under God, indivisible, visible, and with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. All right. Mr. Sagarino, um, we'll start off with the uh, first of the appointments tonight. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And first off, um, can I ask uh, Select oh, Priest to uh, read the yep. uh, the legal? Yep. yep. Yeah, absolutely, because I have it right here, and I forgot to ask him. Nick, do your thing. Thank you, sir. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, General Law Chapter 30A, Section 20, and the governor's March 15th, 2020 order imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place. This public hearing of the town of Burlington Board of Selectmen is being conducted via remote participation. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but the public can listen and or view this meeting while in progress as broadcast on BCAT Government Cable Access Television, BCAT Government Coverage Facebook Live page, or by using the link provided in the, in the agenda of our WebEx Cisco online meeting, or via phone, at 408-418-9388, meeting number 129-353-2015. Members of the public attending this meeting virtually will be allowed to make comments if they wish to do so. During the portion of the hearing designated for public comment, by commenting on the, on the BCAC government coverage Facebook uh, live page, the chat function on the WebEx virtual meeting, or via telephone at 781-270-1635. Thank you. Thank you, Nate. Okay, Paul. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Selectman Priest and Betty will be monitoring uh, the comments on Facebook Live and the WebEx chat. And I will monitor the phone line at 781-270-1635. Uh, we do have uh, two items that are public hearings tonight, so we'll have to pay close attention to that. And uh, just as a reminder to the board that uh, all votes tonight will be required uh, to be done by roll call. So. Great. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first up on the agenda, we have uh, Chief Patterson and Assistant Chief uh, Andy Connerty here uh, for a couple for an appointment uh, within the fire department. Chief. Thank you, Paul. So tonight, uh, the Burlington Fire Department is looking to fill uh, one vacancy. Uh, it just so happens that that vacancy we're looking to fill. Um, is Selectman Runyon's position, who retired uh, at the end of last week um, after 31 years of uh, on the job at Burlington Fire. Uh, we wish uh, Selectman Runyon a happy and healthy retirement. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we go through. <laughs> So we go through a uh, pretty extensive process with new hires um, as we vet our new candidates. Um, so I'm pleased tonight uh, to present the name of Evan Austin to you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Evan is a, is a Cambridge resident. Uh, he was a graduate of Medford High School. Uh, he attended UMass Lowell after uh, graduating high school. Uh, later on, he attended Pro Center for Medics, where he earned his paramedic certification. Uh, Evan is currently a Mass Certified EMT paramedic. He's a Advanced Cardiac Life Support Certified. Uh, he's a Pediatric Advanced Life Support Certified. And he's also uh, a American Heart Association Certified. Um, for work experience, uh, Evan works for Pro Ambulance or Pro EMS out of Cambridge. Uh, he's worked there for uh, over two years, both on the basic life support and advanced life support. Uh, he comes highly recommended from all those uh, that we spoke to at Pro, including administration and um, employees, including field training officers. Uh, he has a uh, background also in the food service industry, which comes in handy in a fire service. Uh, I'm sure uh, once coming on board, 
All right, he'll be uh, he'll be uh, tasked to use some of those cooking skills. Uh, so tonight um, uh, we are looking to appoint Evan Matthew Austin as firefighter paramedic to the Burlington Fire Department. Thank you very much, Chief. Thanks, Chief. Uh, and with the Chief's recommendation, uh, I appoint Evan Matthew Austin to the position of firefighter paramedic in the Burlington Fire Department and ask the, that the board wave its Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Do I have a motion? So moved. Well, for my next second by Jimmy. Uh, roll call vote. Uh, Mr. Hogan? Yes, with the caveat that I didn't think Mike Runyon was replaceable. <laughs> oh, shall <sure>, please. <laughs> Mr. Runyon. Uh, yes. Mr. Tiggis. Yes. Mr. Priest. Yes. Mr. Miranda. Yes. So five zero zero, Betty. Everyone's in favor. Um, I'm going to say is good luck to the uh, the new gentleman coming in, and Michael. Congratulations on thirty one years of uh, carrying that equipment up and down stairs and on ladders and you never have to pick it up again the rest of your life because i'm <laughs> sure with everything that you have to carry in today's society compared to when you started probably weighs more than you do my friend so just want to say congratulations on your retirement again yeah, thank you mr chairman and thank you uh, uh chief patterson um just and chief carnady I, it's been a pleasure um i truly mean that for you know, every shift I, I went to work was, I wouldn't even call it work, uh, um, it, it, indescribable. And um, you get a, we get a great thing going over there, a great bunch of guys, um, you know, just listening to uh, the, the resume of Evan, he's gonna, I'm sure he's gonna fit in nicely. And, uh, you know, I couldn't be prouder of, of the Burlington Fire Department and the service um, that we've, are able to provide the community. We're we're very very fortunate here, and uh, it's it's been a, it's been my pleasure. So thank you all for the kind words. Any, anybody else like that? Jimmy, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mike, congratulations. Um, were you a, a, a decent cook? But are going to be missing your skills? <laughs> In my in my earlier years, Jim, uh, I did quite a bit of cooking over there, but I, I uh, turned it over to the younger guys. They, they tend to eat a little more healthier today than we did when I first started. Well, congratulations, Mike. Job Thank well you. done. Thank you. Gentlemen, you're all set? Thank you, Mr. Thank Chairman. You. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Priest, anything? Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, um, you know, Mr. Austin's resume, you know, uh, seems to speak volumes and uh, the Burlington Fire Department is uh, obviously, uh, you know, um, lucky to have him. And I think, you know, he's lucky to have the Burlington Fire Department from everything that I hear, you know, from uh, Stephen Runyon and uh, Chief Patterson and everybody else. And, uh, you know, obviously um, it's a little bittersweet because, you know, uh, Mike, you know, you'll, you'll no longer be a part of that. Uh, but I mean, you know, you're still part of that family and, um, you know, I think that one of the great things we have here in town is, you know, a very strong community, uh, you know, that, uh, you know, we hold on to each other. And it's a, it's a wonderful thing that, you know, um, mm -hmm. continues on, you know, as, as times change and things change. I hope that's one thing that doesn't. So congratulations to you, Mike. Uh, congratulations to Mr. Austin. And uh, on where we go. Thank you. Okay, Bob, anything or? No, I'm good. Thanks. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, Mr. Sagarino. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Uh, next up, we have a couple of committee appointments. Uh, for the audit committee, uh, the Ways and Means has forwarded David Tate uh, to be their represent representative on the audit committee. Uh, and to that end, I wish to appoint David Tate to the audit committee and ask that the board waive its 15 day waiting period. So moved. Motion by Bob, second by Jim. Roll call vote, uh, Mr. Priest. Yes. Uh, Jimmy. Yes. Mr. Runyon. Yes. Mr. Hogan. Yes. Mr. Miranda. Yes. Five zero zero. Good choice. 
Uh, also, uh, with the audit committee, we had a, a seat available for a citizen representative. Um, we received an application from a very qualified resident. Uh, so with that in mind, um, Mr. Chairman, I wish to appoint Florence Leone to the audit committee and ask that the board waive its 15 day waiting period. So moved. So second. moved by a second. Okay, we roll call vote. Mr. Hogan? Yes. Mr. Tiggis? Yes. Mr. Runyon? Yes. Mr. Priest? Yes. Myself? Yes. 500 zero, zero, betting on both of them. Uh, thank you. Uh, next up. We do have a vacant position uh, as an alternate member of the historical uh, commission. Uh, we have a recommendation from the historical commission for a very qualified resident. Uh, and with that recommendation, I wish to appoint uh, Robert Fahey as the alternate member on the historical commission and ask that the board waive its 15 day waiting period. So moved. Second. So moved and seconded. Uh, once again, we'll go to roll call vote. Uh, Mr. Hogan? Yes. Mr. Runyon. Uh, excellent choice, Mr. Fahey, uh, for that position. Uh, yes. Uh, Mr. Tiggis? Yes, and if I just may say, if he, he's created a, uh, a website, Burlington Retro, if you get a chance, if you haven't seen it, check it out, but definitely a yes. Mr. Priest? Yes. Ms. Miranda, yes, Five zero zero. And Guys, I couldn't agree with you more. Mr. Sagarino, we're all set on that one. You're on mute, Paul. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the next item is uh, John, uh, Public Works Director John Sanchez is here to discuss water uh, with the board. I know it's uh, everybody's favorite topic, but um, we have, have an update to report for the outdoor watering restriction. So uh, John could just uh, join us and update the board on this. Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Uh, Chairman and um... Distinguished selectmen. Uh, so as as I've been coming in like uh, once a year, this time of the year uh, is our time again to uh, do our work, the maintenance work at the mill pond treatment facility. And um, again, due to the low capacity in the Vinebrook treatment facility, we need to uh, uh, implement a full um, water restriction so that we can get water from the MWRA through Lexington so we can do this uh, this maintenance. Uh, so this year, as last year, uh, my recommendation is for the selectmen to approve this effective uh, September 30th, uh, because by the end of, uh, pre which is pretty much the end of the outdoor watering season anyways. Uh, and then to keep this in place uh, for the duration of the winter until March 30th, that will allow us to do additional maintenance and repairs, as well as upgrades that we need to complete at the uh, Mill Pond facility. Uh, if I may, though, before the vote, um, I will uh, give you a quick update of where we are with joining the MWRA since the two items are related. Uh, so we, we keep on uh, inching our way towards a vote by the Water Resources Commission, uh, which, by the way, has no relation to the Massachusetts Water Resources Authority. They're two different entities. So the Water Resources Commission is uh, the group that will finally approve our interbasin transfer so we can actually get water from the MWRA. So at this point, uh, we are a couple of meetings away uh, from getting that vote. Hopefully in November of this year, the uh, Water Resources Commission will take a vote on it. And then after that, there will be a couple of other votes by uh, the authority to actually accept the application from the town of Burlington. So, so we're actually coming into the end of this and, and um, we feel very positive that we're probably going to complete this by the end of the year as far as joining the the authority so with that uh, i'm here to answer any questions regarding the proposed uh, water outdoor water restrictions thank you mr sagarino um we'll start with um mr priest go ahead any questions thank you mr chairman uh only only uh one i know it's rare uh mr sanchez um what what other upgrades are being done to the mill pond uh, over the winter break? <laughs> uh, sure. Well, yeah. So if you recall, uh, a couple of years ago, uh, and it was part of the same project as far as uh, getting more uh, redundancy and more stability to our water uh, system. We are uh, installing a new uh, sediment basin 
um, uh, system such that we don't have to shut down the mill pond to uh, to do this type of uh, maintenance that we which we occasionally do throughout the year. So this will allow us to continuously run the treatment plant without having to get this gap of two or three days in which we have to shut down the treatment plant to do that. Uh, Obviously, in the future, as we do other upgrades, we have to shut down the plant, but it will allow us to at least not have to do this, which we do several times a year. Uh, so we uh, come in and approved this funding a couple of years ago. We went out to bid early this year uh, because there's a lot of lead time to get all the equipment that needs to be installed. We have a contract in place, and we hope that over the winter time we'll do this work. Once again, where the water demand is low, so we'll be able to uh, get water from the MWRA, as well as the Bunbrook facility, and do this project. Excellent. Mr. Chairman, I do have a quick follow-up question, if I may. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Sanchez, um, given the extremely low levels of the mill pond this, this summer, you know, due to drought and all that fun stuff, fun stuff um, does that affect the amount of sediment that gets kicked up and, and run through the system? And, and is that going to make cleaning more difficult when you have to do it? So uh, the, the, the full answer is yes, it does. However, uh, it, it's typically when you get to the lower level, uh, we, have, uh, we have three intakes at, at that particular facility. Uh, when we go into the absolute lower intake is where, it, where the water quality is the worst. When we're in the middle or high intake, uh, water is pretty decent. Uh, but in general, yes, the deeper you go in, in the intake, the more treatment you have to give the water to to process it. The answer is yes. Great. Thank you, Mr. Sanchez. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Runyon. Uh, no questions uh, tonight on, on that. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Hogan. Yeah, Mr. Sanchez, would you kindly just give us a very quick summary what can be used in watering? And this is just for the sprinklers, if I'm reading it correctly. That that is that is correct. So the idea is to uh, to restrict uh, the use of any type of automated uh, sprinkle system, whether it is uh, in ground or the ones that people will use um, when they bring bring it out with a hose to the yard. However, handheld items, whether it is to um, what are your gardening use if they're still going, like mine is still going, we still have tomatoes. So if you're gonna do that, you can still use the handheld hose. Or if you're doing any other type of repairs to your house, particularly uh, if you are, uh, as we do sometimes this year, people will plant new grass, particularly new construction. So that will be allowed because they need to make sure that that water, uh, sorry, that grass will grow uh, for erosion uh, protection. Any type of work that uh, still goes on, whether it is to apply paint in homes, et cetera, will be allowed. So that there, there are exceptions to, to all of this, some of which will require, um, as it always does, a permit from the DPW is not automatic. Um, but, uh, but, but we're pretty, uh, we turn them around very quickly when somebody calls if they are uh, planting new, new grass or a new lawn or, the, or if it's new construction. So again, in general, we're targeting uh, just the irrigation systems. We all set, Bob? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Tiggis. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Selectman Hogan asked a question uh, I was going to ask about who always tell people what they can't do. I was going to ask John to explain what we can do to include washing your car and, and stuff like that. So um, if in doubt, just go to Burlington.org and check, go to the DPW page or call DPW just to make sure that if it's if, if it's questionable, just get the answer. That's all. But uh, thank you for the update, John. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Sanchez, uh, one more thing before you leave. Um, so we're going to do a 911 reverse call to let all the residents know it's a complete water ban. No more Tuesdays, Saturdays. Correct. Uh, we will wait. We will wait until uh, the time. We don't want to get people confused right now. If you've looked at this, it's, it's effective September 30th. So we'll wait until we're closer to that date. Okay. Um, so we don't we don't confuse um, our residents. Okay. So this is going to be for September 30th. Correct. It'll be a full full water band from that point on. Correct. Right. And um, one more thing. The only way that we can get water from the MWRA is to put the full water band on. Right, that's how we get our water. If it's not a full water band, then we cannot get the water in town. Right, 
That, that is correct. My next okay. step after the vote of the Board of Selectmen is to actually uh, 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 get through a DEP, which they have a process to do yeah. this. And then once they are through, then I have to go in front of the NWA for them to approve. So yes, this is the first step of like a three-step process for us to be able to turn that water on. Okay, I'm just trying to get it uh, so the residents, anybody that is watching, can understand how this process works because I'm sure the five of us and you guys are always getting, why don't we have water? Why don't we have water? Why don't we have water? And we try to explain the best we can. So anybody listening, uh, we have to do these processes so that we can get the water from the MWRA. So uh, thank you, Mr. Chan Sanchez. <clears throat> Appreciate your time and all the updates. So you will need to uh, get us a vote on this, Mr. Yep. Chairman. Um, yep, I'm sir. gonna get that. Yep, yes, sir. Um, <laughs> I need a motion. <laughs> I'll make the motion, Mr. Chairman, to uh, approve the uh, recommendation that we have a water ban beginning September 20th, uh, excuse me, September 30th, 2020, and runs through March 30th, 2021 uh, for no irrigation via sprinklers. Thank you, do I have a second? Second. Okay, second uh, by Nick. Okay, roll call vote, Chairman. Uh, Mr. Hogan. Yes. Mr. Runyon. Yes. Mr. Tigas. Yes. Mr. Priest. Yes. Myself, yes. Five zero zero, Betty. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you. And now we have a um, call the next item on the agenda. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the next agenda item uh, was requested by a resident, uh, Mr. George Cooper, uh, to discuss an issue he has with cemetery uh, policy and procedure. I did notice that uh, Mr. Cooper had logged into the meeting. So at this time, uh, I will turn it over to George and allow him to address the board. Thank you. Thank you, folks. This is the Reverend George Cooper. I hope you can hear me. Yes, yes sir. Great. I want to thank you for inviting me and I want to say congratulations to Mike for his, uh, his retirement. As many of you know, I've lived in town for a long time. I've been here for 48 years. I was in town meeting for 25 of those years. I was on Ways and Means for 24. And I think many of you know me. I'm very familiar with the cemeteries, Chestnut Hill, the historical cemetery, Pine Haven. Uh, and in fact, Pine Haven, you may recall, uh, the town was looking to buy that property, and I was the one that led the charge to town meeting so the town could own that property. And I'm glad to see that we managed to turn it into a cemetery, which makes good use. Um, up at Chestnut Hill, I have both my parents, my brother and sister buried there. I go there frequently. Uh, I can say that I believe that the cemeteries as a whole over the years have been extraordinarily well maintained. And I think that's a testimony to, to the people that work there. On this past June, on June 20th, I went up to the Chestnut Hill Cemetery and discovered that my brother's gravesite had been disturbed. Now, my brother was a police officer here in town, and he died at the age of 32 in 1992. And when I got there, I looked and I said, wow, this is kind of different. And you have to remember the time in June, there was a lot of noise about police and how police act and so on. So when I saw all this disturbance, I saw the shrubs on each side were not there. The flowers in front of the grave were ripped out. The plastic edging that extended a foot out from the grave, that was pulled out of the ground and tossed behind the, head, the headstone. And frankly, it was a mess. The stuff that was in front of the grave, which included a plastic bag, a metal badge, a small angel, a US flag, and a coin, they were all gone. And I was a little upset because um, you know, clearly you could tell my brother's grave uh, was a police officer because on his um, headstone, there is an eight inch by five inch replica of his police badge engraved on it, as well as a decal for um, basically the police. You know, it's the thin blue line. So I called the police and asked them, hey, what's going on here? This, this looks bad. And I actually thought it was vandals that had somehow gotten into the cemetery and done something. And I filmed the whole cemetery, walked around the whole place thinking, God, it'd be awful if things had gone on all through the cemetery and people had got in there. 
Okay. And uh, the police asked me to uh, check with the town come Monday. Remember, this was on a Saturday. I did that, and I discovered that, in fact, the cemetery workers had done it, had removed all this. And I had had several discussions. I think I'd sent emails to uh, most of you. I know I had uh, also sent, uh, I'd done phone calls to some of you. I talked to the town administrator uh, about the situation. And, um, the family's kind of upset and wondering why this all happened. But I think, you know, partly what I'm looking for this evening from you folks, the family's asking, frankly, that the items that were disappeared, we'd like them replaced. And I think uh, the town administrator agreed that uh, the town would take care of covering the cost of those. We would like to have the shrubs put back. Um, town can pick what they put there on each side. The family would just like to see something there. They were the shrubs that were there were placed in 1993 with the approval of Shamal, who was uh, in charge at the time. Uh, and they've been there for a long time. So we'd like to see something back there. And the family's looking for something in writing, explaining either what went on or at least a, a slight apology. And that's kind of where we're at. That's that's my ask on behalf of the family. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Cooper. Um, Thank you. Mr. Sagarino, uh, what were some of the discussions you had with Mr. Cooper on the gravesite issue? I know that we've talked uh, I've talked to the uh, cemetery commission itself, but I want to get everybody's input before we do anything else here. Yes, I, I would say um, that Mr. Cooper um, captured our discussion accurately. I, again, um, we do routine cemetery maintenance uh, from time to time, and you know we can't say for certain that our cemetery workers removed any items from the grave, but you know it's possible as part of the cleanup of the shrubs that that may have happened. So, you know, we're willing to take responsibility for that. Um, again, I did offer uh, to replace these shrubs. Um, as the board knows, the shrubs are not allowed as part of cemetery policy. Um, Mr. Cooper indicated that he was given an exemption uh, years ago and you know, not questioning that he did. Uh, so I certainly think that, you know, that's something that we could, again, we're Talking about a cemetery where folks are grieving, so we, we are very sensitive uh, when we get complaints uh, at cemetery. Again, I think um, the only issue that um, Mr. Cooper and I could not uh, agree on was the, you know, his implication that the the grave was somehow intentionally uh, disrupted, and that's just something that, you know, I I believe at the time his the terminology he was using was desecration, and you know I know the cemetery and I know that the care uh, which our employees at the cemetery take care of everybody's uh, grave sites. Uh, they, they treat them as if they're family members. And, you know, that was the one part of uh, Mr. Cooper's request that I didn't feel as though that we could fulfill because, you know, that is just not something that our employees would do. Um, as you may know, we have a great relationship uh, amongst our departments. Um, you know, so all of our public works personnel have a tremendous amount of respect for our police department as well. So I think the only issue we had from our standpoint here is uh, Mr. Cooper's uh, referring to uh, what happened as um, a desecration of the gravesite. Um, this was uh, routine maintenance that we have to perform um, when shrubs get unruly. Um, the roots can uh, damage other gravestones. So it's something that happens quite frequently where we have to uh, dig up the shrubs over there. Um, and that's, uh, Mr. Cooper, I'll give you a chance to, you know, uh, respond to that. I think, like I say, I think your presentation accurately uh, depicted the conversation you and I had about what, what we would agree to. And hopefully I pointed out our area of disagreement um, accurately in your opinion. Well, I, I, I would agree, Paul, that in fact, that's, that's the case and that perhaps you have to recall the time. In June, there was a lot of things going on that involved police. And when I first came up to that one grave site with my brother, it was a very emotional moment to find all the things gone. And the family was quite upset to hear about it. And yeah, that was probably not the best choice of a word. I was I was bothered by the fact that something happened to a police officer's grave. 
And uh, that was a poor choice of words on my part. I was upset, though. And I still am somewhat upset about the, what went on. But what I'm trying to do is get it semi whole, if you will. And as I said earlier, I think as a whole that cemetery workers have done a great job over the years. Because recall, both my parents, my brother and sister, both younger brother and sister, are all buried there. And I'm up at the cemeteries and seeing the cemeteries. And I also was instrumental in making sure that we had the land that became the Pine Haven, Haven Cemetery. And if I feel and sound a little emotional, I apologize for being emotional about it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cooper. Um, gentlemen, we'll start with uh, the board here. Um, uh, Mr. Hogan, any comments or, or questions that you'd like to speak on? Bob, any comments or questions? You're on mute, Bob. Administrator. Well, we, you were on mute. We didn't hear what you said. Uh, no, I said that I'm comfortable with uh, the discussion that Mr. Uh, Mr. Cooper had with uh, the town administrator. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Runyon. Yeah, I really have nothing to add tonight, Joe. Uh, I, 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 I'm fine with uh, on the agreement Paul has with uh, Mr. Cooper. I, I, I certainly understand his his emotions um, uh, that day. So I'm glad there seems to be some sort of a mutual understanding and hopefully this is this issue will, uh, will be moot. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Priest. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, <clears throat> I agree that uh, you know I think that what uh, what Paul and uh, Mr. Cooper have, have worked out is is, is appropriate. Um, Mr. Cooper, I want to thank you obviously for you know bringing this to the board and for coming to a meeting. I think that um, you know it's, it's oftentimes that folks you know um, either don't have the time or you know just aren't comfortable coming to meetings to have discussions. And um, you know I think it's great that you know you're, you're making the time. And obviously you know when it comes to family, who wouldn't? Um, you know, uh, Paul, is there <clears throat> knowing that Mr. Cooper has his family has the, the exemption for the for the shrubs? Um, is there any way we can amend the policy just to have the, the cemetery facility contact the family to notify them that the shrubs have become unruly and therefore have to be uh, dealt with? Um, you know, I mean, I don't know how many other shrubs we have kicking around. I haven't done a survey of the cemeteries, but. Um, you know, knowing that, you know, this is such a sensitive topic for a lot of folks. So I make sure that we're covering our bases. Uh, thank you. Uh, John Sanchez is still here in the meeting with us. So, uh, we can direct that question to him in terms of operationally, you know, whether that's a possibility, uh, when doing, uh, maintenance, uh, John. So, uh, so to, to, to you, Nick, and to the town administrator, uh, and, and again, I don't, I don't want to get into, um, but I. I, I hear from Mr. Cooper that he got approval from Shamal. Uh, unfortunately for us, we we don't have a record of it. So when 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 we go to a cemetery, and as an example, I was there last week because the guys were doing a particular project I wanted to check on, and over the weekend, news drops up here next to uh, a different gravesite near where our guys were working. So things do appear there over the weekends without any type of permission or guidance, uh, and it, so we have a lot of that that happens in in. The question is on the policy is like, well, those are not allowed. You know, we try to work with grieving people as they as they grieve, you know, because we don't we don't want to get, get anybody upset. Uh, but one thing that we did say to our employees is particularly when when some of uh, the plantings that somebody might have had there, whether it's through the winter, spring, when they get uh, totally inside, it's a take a picture of those before they are removed. Uh, because we don't remove uh, uh, plantains that are in, in good condition. It just does not happen. So, uh, and, and so they've been doing that since I gave them that direction. Because it just makes it easier to explain later uh, when, when people see a picture of, of why things were removed. Sure. Um, so, follow up to that, Mr. Chairman, if I may. Yes. Um, so, uh, Don, um, is it, is it, again, I apologize. I haven't been to the cemetery in a while. And it's, a, it's a shame on me for not. Uh, uh, visiting my family up there um but um is it clearly posted that we do not allow shrubs? like i mean like i i, I want to make sure that like we the, the policies clear the public and then moving forward 
either we contact people and say you've got like this this appeared it needs to be removed and i, I don't mean to spiral this is a bigger conversation i just want to if we need to address this and say it's it's an all or nothing scenario i'd like to do that so that folks understand what the policy is moving forward and i understand that this is a very sensitive topic and that obviously you know when we lose a loved one we grieve uh and we want to express that in some way but we also need to maintain the property um and not have you know recurring issues down the line um i just want to create you know whatever that's going to be and i mean you know it's it's hard because you know once this board turns over you know whoever's next is going to you know, maybe see differently. And, you know, I mean, I could be the only one feeling this way myself, but, um, you know, I guess what I'll say is I'll, I'll table this discussion for later. Just, I, I'd like to revisit the cemetery policy around, you know, planning things and, and uh, you know, see if we can't come to some better conclusion. Um, obviously, Mr. Cooper, you know, I, I, I feel for you and I am sorry that this happened to you and your family. Um, it's never easy, you know, um, you know, dealing with, you know, uh, um lost loved ones never you know no matter how you cut it so uh my apologies to you sir uh mr chairman thank you for the time thank you john thank you nick uh jimmy before i get to you just really quick nick about a year and a half ago maybe two years ago we had a subcommittee put together and i was on it uh to go over the rules and regulations at the cemetery and once you read it and you realize when you talk to mrs sanchez everything's there for a reason they can only go so far out from the grave site. Uh, it all has to do with the safety and the maintenance of the guys that are there. Uh, the shrubs aren't allowed because what happens is Mr. Cooper's been fine with it over the years, taking care of them. But as soon as the families start to go three or four years, uh, the person has passed. Not as many people go as in, to the cemetery as they used to, and the trees become overgrown, and they start to uh, get to a point where they're not looking good. That becomes a responsibility of the cemetery to take care of, which puts more work on them which isn't part of their maintenance division of the cemetery. It's not there to take care of shrubs and flowers and everything else. That's why a lot of it's in place, but we will definitely have a discussion about that later. I just want to give you a quick heads up on what we had discussed a year and a half ago. Okay. Thank uh, you. Yep. Mr. Tigas. Now, I'm sorry I made you wait so long. No, no, that's fine, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is probably directed to Mr. Sanchez. Uh, John, when we do these maintenance servicing, are they on a regular interval or regular basis? So I'm sorry, I have to go and turn my light on. <laughs> That's okay. Um, the, the time, like the, the uh, cleaning or the maintenance uh, back in June, are, are these scheduled, are these on a regular interval, like a, a mass cleaning of the, of the cemetery? So, so we have we have a couple of them that we do uh, regularly, and we put notices that, that those are common. In fact, I think we're still doing it on the paper. Uh, uh, it's the springtime is one of which in which we do it. We do it after some of the holidays, and we and we put it that we're going to remove all the plantings and extraneous material that people have in there. And those are the easy ones. Uh, in the summertime, we work with our summer help. Uh, you know, for for this major work to actually uh, remove unsightly uh, plantings is not an easy project. This this is a, this is this is a lot of work. So, we only do that when we have a little bit of extra time and we have to help, which only happens in the summertime when we have that uh, because we use summer help for this. Um, it, it takes a while to to do this. I don't know if you ever pull shrubs from uh, your house, but it's not an easy project. And we, this is not something we just want to go ahead and do. We only do it when they are not, um, when they are unsightly, to be honest with you. So, uh, but no, it's not a particular time because it depends on what else we, we have going at the, at the particular su during the summertime. Thank you. Just a quick follow-up, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Um, following up on what, uh, as far as notification, and you may even be doing this already, prior to these cleanings or maintenance, events, whatever you call them, it's one option would be to notify the families, but maybe is, can you put a sign at the entrance to the cemetery saying all items need to be removed by such and such a date for maintenance? And I, I'm not sure if that'll be effective or not, but it, it might not hurt. So, uh, and, and again, and I think that uh, Mr. Morandi uh, talked about the committee, which is still a stick, uh, talk, and perhaps this is something we, we talked about it again during our last meeting, which was like a year and a half ago, there was a lot of talk about this, particularly in Pine Haven, because of all the stuff that was appearing at the cemetery. 
it maybe it's worth getting the committee together to uh, because what I believe that maybe and certainly maybe somebody else thinks that is good uh, and, and and it's not just plantings it's uh, statues and um, all kinds of bullet items that appear um, literally over overnight or, or on weekends um, and, and and we can talk about doing that on signage there is signage in, in different areas of the cemetery about the plantings but it's something we can talk about and and, and I will absolutely follow up on it uh, but my suggestion will be to perhaps uh, Get the committee together again and again this is just my suggestion thank you jimmy thank you john listen um i'm on that subcommittee so john we'll get together and discuss this again um and i mr cooper thank you for your patience at this time um but people have to kind of understand there's a lot going on at, at the cemetery and i'm not talking about the maintenance i'm not talking about the guys working there. there's a very emotional um discussion to have because of the loss of um, your loved one. Uh, in the beginning, everybody wants to put everything out there. They want to put the teddy bear out there. They want to put the saint out there. They want to put um, whatever religion sign you have in front of this grave site. Um, and then over the time, what happens is these things stay there and then people have a tendency to never forget their lost and love of that person, but they don't have the time to get to the cemetery. They don't have time to go uh, get the planting. They they dig up in front of it. They put bricks down. The next thing you know, the bricks are overgrown with weeds and grass and everything else. That's another thing that, that the committee has to take care of. So these are the things we, um, as a cemetery committee, have to look at when we're making these rules and regulations. Uh, we almost have to take you um, and really sit back and you have a, all kinds of feelings for people when they lose somebody. Trust me, I, I, we've all lost somebody very special in our world, and we go to the grave sites and see them. Uh, so at this point, I'm just trying to get the understanding for everybody of what really happens over there. Mr. Cooper, you've taken care of your brother and your sister and your other brother's grave site very well, from what I can understand. Um, some people don't do that, and that's where these things come into play. Uh, so we will have a committee, Mr. Sanchez, we will get together, we will discuss the rules and regulations again. Um, everybody's handed a package when they purchase a grave site, they're handed what they can put, what they can't put. Um, we're going on the assumption that Mr. Uh, Mr. Shamal told Mr. Cooper he could do this. I'm sure he did, I'm not questioning that. But how many of those did happen? How many times did Mr. Shamal say that? I know the guys down there now say, no, I'm sorry, we can't do that. Um, you look at the veteran spot, there's only supposed to be certain, uh, there's certain colored uh, stones out there right now. There's three stones out there that are totally wrong color, but they're there and there's nothing we can do about it because that's somebody's lost one. And I'm just getting into this just so everybody understands what page we're on. Uh, I am okay with Mr. Sagarino and Mr. Cooper working out the details for this. I'm okay with that, but moving forward, having to, having to talk about this, the cemetery committee does, um, not the cemetery, I'm sorry, the cemetery workers, they do a great job at our cemetery. Uh, cemeteries are, are very clean and neat. They're always spotless, no matter what time we go there. Um, so I'm just trying to put this all together for everybody to understand exactly what happens over there. I'm gonna get off my soapbox right now and. Mr. Sagarino, if Mr. Cooper can work it out, we'll go from there. May, may I make a comment? Absolutely. I simply want to say that I agree 100% that the cemetery workers do a great job. And that I am more than willing to assist on any committee dealing with this issue, because it does hit people very hard when something happens. Absolutely. And I will tell you that there is in the cemetery rules it does, for example, state that after a reasonable attempt has been made to notify the owner of any proposed removal, et cetera. So there's wording in there. I just think that we may not necessarily always follow the way the rules are set. So it might be time to revisit. So if I can help in any way, I'm happy to do so. And I Thank will go to the town administrator and, and we, will, we will come to an accommodation, I'm sure everything. All right. But I want to thank you all for your time this evening. Thank you. thank you. Paul, you, uh, you all set with this? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll reach out to Mr. Cooper this week and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll finalize uh, everything we talked about here tonight. 
Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you. All right, gentlemen. Thank you, Ms. Kupa. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Sagarino. Uh, we're going to move along now. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the next item uh, relates to a use of the town common for the Diwali Festival. Of Life. Uh, we had a discussion on this at our previous meeting. Uh, the board had a couple of items for us to follow up on with the recreation department. Uh, Betty had spoke to Brendan and they are able to assist with the lights. They were already in discussion with the organizers to do so. Um, the next item was in regards to a banner on the gazebo. Uh, Brendan also had no concerns with that part of the request. I think the last item that we talked about was uh, a banner uh, on the corner, on the corner sign, which um, you know, we had determined was not in line with the town's current policy for hanging banners on the corner. So we didn't feel as though that that was uh, an appropriate use at this time. Uh, but that's where we left the discussion. Uh, Brendan has joined us here for the discussion if the board has any further questions. And I know that we do have some representatives um, of the Diwali Festival. And, and just as a reminder to the board that this is a, a virtual event uh, this year. So we'll be doing the lights on the trees and, and using the gazebo, uh, but it won't be an event where we have to sort of worry about uh, spacing and six foot distances and things of that nature. So at this point, uh, I'll turn it back to you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, as I said before, Brendan uh, from Parks and Rec has joined us in case the board has any additional questions. Thank you, Mr. Zagarino. Uh, Brendan, we're gonna go right to you first um, and tell us what you, what you approved exactly. I know Paul just told us, but just want to go get some words out of you. Uh, make sure you guys sure. are. Sure. Uh, we, I had sat down with um, Ginny and Indra to discuss this year's Diwali, and uh, I agreed that we would light the same trees as we did last year um, up by the town of Burlington sign, um, the three trees across there. It's when we start hanging lights for the holidays anyway, so uh, we just get a little earlier start um, and we make sure those trees are set and lit. Um, and then as far as the banner, that's, um, you know, obviously we wouldn't approve that. That has to go before uh, you guys, the Board of Selectmen. So um, that's what we had approved, that I would help them with the lights again this year. And, um, you know, any any other small needs that they, they had, if I could accommodate them, um, our department would definitely uh, help out. All right, great, thank you. Uh, gentlemen, we're gonna go with uh, questions. So we'll start, Mr. Runyon, anything? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. No, I, I really don't have any questions. I know we've done this in the past. Um, this is, uh, uh, you know, uh, the group uh, we've, we've worked with many times in the past, they've proven to be uh, responsible, and I have I have no issues. I'm just uh, uh, you know unfortunate in the, the, the current COVID situation, and we can't actually have the the in person event. But uh, I'm 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 fine with the uh, the lights and the uh, banner on the common for that week. Great. Thank you, thank you, uh, Mr. Priest. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yeah, I, I think I speak for everyone. I say that uh, not having it live this year is is just disappointing. And, Obviously, that's you know through no fault of anyone uh, in particular. That's just the state of things. But uh, I think it's great that um, you know the IAB can do uh, you know a, a virtual event this year. I think it's wonderful. Uh, I will be sorely missing the food trucks and the dancing and the music for sure. Um, but um, you know, I think it's great, and I I, I hope that the, uh, the the gazebo looks fantastic when you when you folks are done uh, decorating. I can't wait to. To take a drive by, walk around, take a look. Um, you know, um, and uh, I think it's great that uh, Brendan and you, your team can can help out. Um, you know, any way we can support the community, you know, we 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 try our darndest. So um, it's that this is it's it's great. It's just unfortunate that it has to be this way. So uh, you know, you've, you've got my approval. Sure. Great, thank you, um, Mr. Hogan. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, yeah, the, the, we all know who the group are, are people who are organizing this thing. We had the recent 75th anniversary uh, flag uh, ceremony and everything was dignified and they made sure that 
uh, a, a small amount of people were in attendance and uh, we were all there. Um, but uh, to, to Nick's point also, you know, if, if they happen to have any food and they want to drop it off, that would be fine. <laughs> <laughs> right, thank you. Thank you. We would love to. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, yeah, I just want to echo what everyone says. Um, you know, uh, it's, uh, it's a very, they're very, uh, it's a responsible group doing a, a, a great event. Um, under the current situation, obviously we had to, it has to be adjusted a little. The one thing I will miss is I know last year the organizers promised me that you would be dancing this year, Mr. Chairman, but um, I guess we'll have to put that as a rain date and get you out there dancing at, at some point. Well, I can tell you my hands started sweating already when you said that. <laughs> Oh, we are planning, we, we oh, are putting together Mr. the list. Gregorino and uh, Mr. Mr. Freeze dancing on the common earlier this year. Sorry, Paul. <laughs> but listen, um, Ginny, uh, would you like to speak on behalf of this? I see you on our page here. Okay. Hi, can you guys hear me? Absolutely. Okay, hi. Yeah, so uh, uh, Bob Hogan, we have added to the list uh, of delivering the food, uh, you know, if possible, uh, if we can't get the trucks there. <laughs> and uh, we are also planning the virtual event. So, Jim, uh, I, we're hoping that this year, Diwali, the wish of having uh, Joe on a dance floor, maybe it's virtual, uh, be part of it. <laughs> So uh, let's hope uh, we are still in the planning progress. Um, but I want to say that <laughs> I, I also want to say that, um, you know, the town and the selectmen have always uh, showed tremendous support and help to IAP and we are very grateful for that. And uh, this year, um, yeah, it is really very unfortunate that we cannot uh, put this event in person uh, because of the situation, because of the COVID situation. Uh, there will be a virtual event. We'll send out the dates. Um, we are for now planning October 29th to the 1st for the virtual event. But the lighting would be, uh, as I had sent it on the email, would be from November 7th to the 17th. Uh, that's when uh, the actual Diwali falls this year. Um, and uh, decorating the gazebo is something, continuing the tradition that we have. Um, Although we cannot uh, say it in person, uh, happy Diwali to everyone, having a banner, uh, maybe a small string light, um, or maybe some small paper ornaments uh, to represent Diwali decoration. Uh, we would uh, like, that's our plan. Um, yeah, more details would come uh, in the day, or Sheetal, if you want to add something. Oh, before yeah. I give it to them, uh, sorry, I want to say congratulations to Mike Ranian. Uh, sorry, Nida. Um, happy retirement, Mike, uh, and thank you for your 31 of your years of service. Awesome. So, yeah. Yes, thank you, Jeannie. First of all, uh, good evening, Mr. Chairman and other board members. This is Indra Dev, and I'm the treasurer of IAB. And it's really nice to see you all, even though it is virtual. Uh, I want to say that uh, this year, uh, probably the Sheetal is our, Sheetal Bhamar is our president-elect. And she would say something because uh, there are a lot of interest is coming from other town uh, departments like library. I think she told would uh, mention that. But I want to say one more thing is I really, really want to thank Brendan Egan, who works with us, who works really hard and helps us a lot during the event. Yeah. Thank you, Brendan. Yeah, and thank you, Brendan. And she told if you want to add something. Indra, thank you, Mr. Chairman and Board of Selectmen for giving us this opportunity to present our idea and uh, helping us continue with the um, with the Diwali tradition, right? Now, Burlington and surrounding communities know that Burlington is an awesome community that does this one-off event um, that people come to attend from all surrounding towns. Um, I do want to say that Burlington Public Library and also um, the uh, Burlington Public Library wants to host this event with us, do one of the virtual events, be part of it. So we are definitely looking for um, more community in, uh, involvement. And, uh, you know, I, I look forward to working with the Burlington community in the next two years when I will be handling uh, IAB along with Ginny and Indra. Thank you. 
Thank you. Very much. Yes, Mr. Tigas. Uh, thank you. Just real quick, um, for the record, Jimmy, uh, uh, what, what uh, tall lights will, will be on the comments? Say, say that again, uh, Jim. Just, uh, uh, just for the record, what color lights are going to be on the comments? In the what kind of light color? In the gazebo? What color? Red? Yeah. Oh, what color? I, I think that we always leave up to uh, Brendan. Um, so whatever is available, red, white, blue. Uh, okay, I didn't know if you were going to use the colors of the Indian flag or not. Yeah, uh, no, no. Uh, I think specifically okay. uh, what represents Diwali, uh, but I think uh, we have I've always uh, left that on Brendan to pick the color so that you know he can use it for the next uh, coming festival as well. Okay, the reason I ask is um, maybe uh, just a thought off the top of my head is encourage residents of the town to also put out like for Diwali just so that, you know, 7th through the 17th. Yeah, on the, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's nice. And I think uh, we can talk to Brendan and if he has no issues, then we can, you know, give our color choice. Um, uh, and also for around the town, I mean, that one uh, request that we've been having so far, like, you know, to let all the trees probably okay, one well, day. Okay, well, regardless of the color, I suggest <laughs> having residents put out lights that week that, that time period. Yeah, Just I know that, know. yeah, that we are, uh, yes, we would, uh, uh, like all the Indians typically they do, as far as I know, um, but we would encourage them, uh, you know, to put more lights during that time. And I think, uh, now even more because of the COVID situation, uh, just to, you know, um, help each other be hopeful. So yeah, we'll, we'll definitely make it a point to announce it, to light the houses and like, just like Christmas okay. decoration. We'll do All that. All right, thank you all. What's up, Mr. Chairman? All right, thank you very much. So at this point, guys, uh, we're gonna need a um, motion um, uh, to approve. Mr. Chairman? Yes. I'd probably make a motion to approve the use of the town common uh, as submitted with the exception of the uh, corner of Bedford and Cambridge Street for the use of Diwali Festival of Lights on the, uh, November 7th through the 17th. Okay, thank you. A second? Second by Bob. Okay, gentlemen, roll call vote. Uh, Mr. Hogan? Okay, you're on mute, but I got the head nod. Uh, Mr. R Mr. Runyon? Yes. Uh, Mr. Tiggers? Yes. Mr. Priest? Yes. Mr. Miranda? Yes. So five zero zero. congratulations. Thank all you. Right, work it out with Brendan Egan and we'll go from there. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank all you right. all. Thank you. Thank you. Some Thank year, you. Some year I'll dance. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, we can do it virtually. B Cat, you want to go down to the Mirandis and we'll. Uh, uh, listen, listen, the, the, the ladies are going to have to give me a lot of lessons because I can't tell my right from my left. <laughs> Actually, we are looking, I'm sorry to interrupt, but we are looking for uh, the selectmen to participate in our finale on uh, November 1st. So you will hear from us. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Thank you. And, uh, Thank you. One more thing I just want to mention, Sheetal is our president-elect. So she'll be the next president from January. Congratulations. Very good. Okay. And thank you all again. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Bye. Uh, let's see. Public hearing. This is a public hearing. Mr. Sagarino. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, next up, we do have a public hearing. So uh, I would ask uh, Selectman Priest and Betty to monitor the Facebook Live and the chat. Um, I am monitoring the phone. Uh, 781 270 1635. If you would like to uh, chime in on this public hearing for alcohol, and I believe the first step, uh, Mr. Chairman, if could we ask uh, Selectman Tiggis to read the, the meeting notice into the record? Absolutely. All right. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, notice is hereby given that in uh, that. An online web, WebEx public hearing will be held on Monday, September 14, 2020, at our at or after 6:45 p.m. to consider the application for a transfer of a wine and malt license and change of the manager of record from Kali Convenience Plus LLC doing business as Kali Convenience to AL 
looks like AL, uh, Prime Energy Consultant Incorporated doing business as AL Prime. For the premises located at 324 Cambridge Street in Burlington, as allowed per Massachusetts General Laws 138, relative, relative supporting documentation will be available online for review at the Selectman's web website page at Burlington.org. Thank you, Mr. Tiggis. So, Paul, um, we'll get them going first and then we'll open the public hearing, right? Uh, I think you can you can uh, open it now, and then we'll have um, them give their presentation. That's correct. Okay. Gentlemen, I need a vote to open the public hearing. Right, Paul, roll call vote on the open the public hearing, yes? Yes, yes sir. Hogan? Yes. Mr. Uh, Runyon? Yes. Mr. Diggis? Yes. Mr. Priest? Yes. Mr. Mirandi? Yes. Okay. Um, gentlemen, um, is Mike Vaughn on, on here? I don't see his name. Um, I am, Mr. Chairman, if you can uh, Absolutely. hear and see me. Are. But uh, good, good evening, Mr. Chairman and members Thank of the you, board. Uh, for the record, Attorney Mark Vaughn with the law firm of Reamer Bronstein. Uh, representing AL Prime tonight in connection with this transfer application. Uh, thank you for having us um, on here. So I think the, the application is uh, it's relatively straightforward. Um, I think that uh, the board is hopefully familiar with the location, uh, Carly Convenience Store at 324 Cambridge Street. It's a uh, convenience store and gas station uh, that's been operating for uh, many years uh, at that location. Um, they, about seven years ago, uh, did receive approval from the Board of Selectmen for a beer and wine uh, package store license as part of their convenience store operation uh, at that time. Um, again, that was approximately seven years ago. Um, and they have been operating there uh, without any issue uh, for those seven years. I think the, the current ownership, uh, Carly and Mr. Fuscioni, have done a, a very commendable job in terms of making sure that uh, beer and wine sales were appropriately monitored and um, all requirements were, were satisfied. Um, our client, AL Prime, is um, uh, acquiring the property um, from Carly and they would step in and operate the gas station along with the convenience store and uh, the beer and wine operation uh, itself. So uh, AL Prime is a, a regional operator of uh, gasoline stations and uh, convenience stores throughout New England. Uh, they have a tremendous amount of experience and a strong reputation uh, in this area. Uh, they actually have uh, three other locations in Massachusetts currently where they have convenience stores with a beer and wine uh, sale component. So they're very familiar with uh, the requirements. They're familiar with the precautions and the identification systems that need to be uh, followed through. Uh, with me tonight, we have a couple of folks from uh, AL Prime, both Tony uh, Guba, who is uh, kind of heads up construction real estate for them, as well as the manager that we've listed on the application here, uh, Mr. Ben uh, Darwish. Um, and I, uh, with respect to Mr. Darwish, he, he's, he's listed as the manager. He is TIPS uh, certified. He knows um, the, uh, uh, the elements of, of, of alcohol service. So uh, as, a, as it relates to this location, Mr. Chairman, again, I, I, uh, I prefaced my remarks saying it's straightforward and that we're not looking to change um, the layout of the store. It's, um, if you've been in there, the beer and wine with, is at the far right hand side. When you walk in, it's on the, uh, the far right. So there's some coolers um, as well as some uh, dry storage of, of beer and wine. And uh, I actually visited the site, met with the current owner uh, to go over the operation. And they have a very, um, you know, strict procedure in place with, you know, padlocks that go on the, the beer and wine cooler doors when the hours of operation don't allow for the sale of that product. And they have uh, custom made uh, coverings that go over the uh, items that are on the floor as well. So that anyone coming in during any hours where beer and wine is, is not to be sold, uh, specifically know that that's, that's off limits. So uh, my client's just simply looking to step in and continue that same operation. And um, they look forward to being part of the, the Burlington community. So uh, with that, happy to answer any questions or any uh, comments you may have. So thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you, Mark. Um, we had met uh, myself and Mr. Hogan. We had met with uh, Ben and uh, uh, prior to this at a, a subcommittee meeting. So uh, at this point, um, Ben, would you like to add anything to this? Would you like to add anything before I turn it over to the board members? Mr. Hogan will be first. You're on mute. You're on mute, Ben. You're on mute. The no, the mute button. Yeah, I did. There you go. I did. There you go. Thank you. I said uh, we're we're looking forward uh, to taking over this uh, location. Uh, I made myself familiar with it, and uh, I I visited that place probably five times already. I talked to the morning person, the afternoon, the owner. I familiarized myself with the um, layout. And uh, I I was worried about how we're gonna separate the uh, beer and wine if if it comes to the time where we cannot sell. I was satisfied, and uh, I spoke to to the guys uh, who work there in case they want to continue with us. Uh, some of them said uh, confirmed they would love to, and some were you know yes or no, and. Uh, once we get the uh, confirmation, we will uh, proceed uh, with talking to them for further steps. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Hogan. I thank you, Mr. Here. Chairman. Um, a couple of things, uh, Ben. You're going to be listed as the manager. How many hours? And I forgot to ask this the other day when we met. How many hours do you anticipate uh, being in the location yourself as the as the manager of record? Uh, I think. Uh, uh, at least 35 to 40 hours i i pass by these locations all the time and i spend time in each so uh not less than 40 hours okay and uh one other thing if i could mr chairman um you know we we are very particular in burlington about the um uh, the rules and regulations for the sale of alcohol and uh, we hope that uh, you stay on top of this because uh, when we do the uh, the checks uh, and the police uh, travel around uh, on their annual uh, 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 sales and purchases to see if if all things are appropriate, that uh, you you always pass uh, because we are strict about it and uh, we want to welcome you here and uh, be part of the family here in Burlington. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and uh, I think we both, uh, Joe, but you can speak for yourself, uh, supported uh, this. Yep, absolutely. Um, so what we're going to do at this point, uh, Mr. Mr. Tigas, any comments? Jim? Uh, thank, yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I personally don't like the idea of, of, of convenience stores selling alcohol. However, that that aside, this is existing. It was approved prior. Um, it's just simple transfer, it, but you know, I I don't like the idea, but I'm not going to oppose it because it has already been, I don't want to say grandfathered in, but it, it's it, it's already there. So I'm not against it. I just don't like, pers I just personally, I don't like it, but I'm not going to oppose this one because it's pre-existing. Thank you, Jim. Mr. Priest. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I actually agree with uh, Selectman Tigas. I don't uh, love the idea of, uh, you know, beer and wine in uh, you know, gas station convenience stores. Um, you know, that's just a personal purpose of mine. Uh, but I, I also agree that I will not be upholding, uh, you know, this disable transfer because of that. Um, obviously, I wish, you know, the, the new owners, uh, you know, uh, all the best and, you know, uh, maintain the property and, and uh, you know, uh, they'll have to, you know, pass all their certifications just like everybody else. So that's why we have the rules in place. But uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's it for me. Thank you, Mr. Priest. Mr. Runyon. And thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, um, I think it's been well documented that, um, again, I, as uh, uh, Selectman Tigas and, and Selectman Priest alluded to, that I, I do not don't necessarily support the idea of the uh, uh, liquor sales at the uh, convenience stores and gas stations. Um, uh, having said that, though, there is, uh, you know, we, we don't want to, we cannot cannot unreasonably deny. Uh, 
this request. They've got a good track record over there, and I'm I'm confident that Mr. Obada will uh, continue that that record of um, uh, good service and and compliance with the local bylaws. And I'm ready to approve the transfer tonight. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm going to open it up to uh, gentlemen. Anybody out there in the public that would like to speak on this? Uh, we'll start, Mr. Sagarino. Any phone calls? Uh, Mr. Chairman, we have not received any phone calls uh, up until this minute. Okay. Um, Mr. Priest, anybody? No. At this time, no, sir. Okay. Uh, Betty, anybody from your end? No, sir. Nothing. Okay. So um, I'll take a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. So moved and seconded. Seconded by Nick. Uh, we'll give you a roll call vote, Mr. Hogan. Yes. Mr. Runyon. Yes. Mr. Tigas. Yes. Mr. Priest. Yes. Mr. Miranda. Yes. So I can believe that at this point the, the public hearing is closed. My comments on this: uh, I don't believe that this particular board of selectmen likes the idea of having alcohol in a convenience store. Like we've said before, we've denied a couple other ones. Um, that was a different board. This is a different board. Every time we turn around, it's a different board. So this particular board doesn't like this, but we're not going to stop it from happening. We can't. Um, we just wish you the best of luck. Um, we still have to vote on it. Um, and uh, that's all I can really say at this point. All right. So I need a motion to vote on. Mr. Sagarino, any comments from you before I vote? Uh, no, I have nothing further, Mr. Chairman. Uh, there was no uh, opposition from any other department, departmental no, reviews either. Okay. Great, thank you. No, it doesn't mind. Um, yeah, <laughs> no, it doesn't mind. I don't think. Oh, give me the next one. Yes. I'll come with you. Mr. Fushioni, could you please put your mic on mute, please? Did you get it on mute, John? So it's okay. That's okay. We're going to have a vote uh, at this. There we go. Thank you. Uh, at this point, we need a motion and a vote. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we approve the transfer of this existing uh, beer and wine license uh, for Carly's to AL Prime. I have a second. I'll second, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. Uh, now we're going to have a roll call vote. Uh, Mr. Priest? Yes. Mr. Tigas? Yes. Mr. Runyon? Uh, yes, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, I just want to uh, point out we're going to change a manager also on, on the uh, warrant as well. We need an additional vote on that, I, I presume. Yes, we will. This is this is a two pod vote, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yep, Mike, you're right. Thank you. So you are a yes. Uh Miss Miranda, yes. Well, did I Yes. I did. Okay. So it's five zero zero in favor of the transfer of the license. Thank you. Now we have to transfer the manager. Uh, uh if I could, Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we approve the uh transfer of the new manager. Uh Ben Darwish. Did I say that correct, Ben? Yes. Thank you. Okay, so I have a motion or I have a second. I'll make a second. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you. Okay, roll call vote, Mr. Hogan. Yes. Mr. Runyon. Yes. Uh, Mr. Tickets. Yes. Mr. Priest. Yes. Mr. Morandi. Yes. So five zero zero. Favor. Welcome, hey, gentlemen. Hey, good Thank luck, you, guys. Sir. All the best to you. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you very Thanks. much. Thanks very much. Appreciate Thanks. your time. And uh, if I could just say, uh, Selectman Mike Runyon, uh, congratulations on your retirement. Wish you uh, great health and happiness in the years ahead. So, sleep late. <laughs> <laughs> See you later. Uh, good. Bye. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, may I just add? Yeah. I didn't hear you, Bob. I'm sorry. 
may, may I just make one comment? Yes, sir. To follow up on what you said about um, uh, this board being rather strict uh, and have denied a couple of other uh, gas stations who had applied for uh, liquor licenses, uh, we did so not just because we don't like them. We did so also because it was important to note that they were in locations that didn't make sense and we were able to deny them and have those upheld by the ABCC. Um, uh, we, we, we spent a lot of time going over the different locations and some of them didn't make sense. Uh, and we were able to uh, convince the ABCC that those, those are the reasons why we were denying those uh, convenience uh, gas station liquor stores. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Bob. Okay. Uh, another public hearing coming up. Mr. Sagarino. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, could I ask uh, Selectman Tiggis to start us start us off by reading the uh, advertisement, please? Sir, uh, certainly. I have it here somewhere. It's right here. <laughs> Sorry, I missed. Place the printed copy. I have it. Do you want me to read it? No, no I, I'll get. I have it on the computer. Oh, good. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Please be advised that the board of selectmen will hold a public hearing on Monday, September fourteenth, twenty twenty, at or after six forty p.m. during a WebEx online meeting. The link to join the meeting is at the end of this notice. Horizon, New England Incorporated, and NSTAR Electric Company doing business as Eversource Energy has submitted a request of consideration for approval from the Town of Burlington Board of Selectmen to place one jointly owned poll P1A slash E1A on the northerly side of Great Meadow Road at a point approximately plus or minus 96 feet southeasterly from existing poll P1. Plans for this request may be found on the Board of Selectmen website page at Burlington.org. Thank you, Mr. Tiggis. Um, we're going to open the public hearing. I need a motion to open the public hearing, please. I moved. Motion open by uh, Bob and second by Nick. Roll call vote, Mr. Hogan. Yes. Mr. Runyon. Mike. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Joey. I had to move to a different location. I was running out of battery power. What was the question? Uh, just to open the public hearing. I need a more. I need your vote on that. I'm sorry. Yes. Okay. Thank you, uh, Mr. Tiggis. Yes. Mr. Priest. Yes. Mr. Moretti. Yes. So the public hearing is open. Um, Mr. Segarino, is there somebody here from Verizon? Uh, yes, but just to, to make it easy for the, the board, this is uh, for a new poll to service the public works facility on Great Meadow Road. Um, so with that, I, I can turn it over to Verizon uh, for a presentation and to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you very much. Okay. Michael, any uh, comments? Not uh, from Verizon, I'm sorry, not Michael Runyon. Um, just that this was a poll that was requested by Eversource uh, for new service to the new building at 10 Great Meadow Road. Uh, it's a mid-span poll. It's going to be set 16 feet back from the road and 96 feet away from the existing poll, one away from middle sex turnpike. Uh, this poll is needed to provide service to the new building and possible future service for Verizon and other um, communication companies in the future. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll start with Mr. Priest. Any questions? Uh, no, sir. I have no questions at this time. Mr. Hogan. No questions at this time, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Tigas. I just quickly, it sounds like this is a poll to uh, supply the new DPW building. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's correct. Okay, yep, I'm good. Thank you. Mr. Ryan. Uh, uh, the the only thing I tell you, reading reading the backup 
I thought it was interesting to see that this poll is uh, a co-ownership between uh, Verizon and Eversource. It's the first time in my career I've ever seen a poll that is co-owned by both of these uh, companies. Um, uh, I, I have no, I have no other questions. This is, you know, obviously we need this for uh, access and egress to the new DPW facility. All set here, Mr. Chairman. Okay, we're all set, um, Mr. Chairman. Else? You already had your question. I know, I know, but okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Thank you, Selectman Runyon. Just actually brought up a start, uh, thought in my head. Uh, if I could ask um, Michael from uh, Pike Telecom, who's responsible if this poll gets hit? or damaged so this would be a poll which i believe this town verizon sets and maintains the polls and um if there's a damage it would be a joint effort between verizon and eversource to uh hold the poll make it safe make any repairs as needed uh remove any damaged polls and uh i believe they also i think eversource in this area would be responsible for aerial uh, brush clearing in the area if any branch would fall down. So if, if there's an issue, town calls Verizon for, for a response? Um, I'm actually not familiar with the breakdown in the town of Burlington on who dispersed dispatch. But I believe that it would probably go to Eversource first, and um, they would be the ones that would be there to, to make the poll safe before Verizon up to do any work with the uh, replacement of the poll and with the communications repairs. Okay, all, all I ask is that that determination on who's the primary responder be ironed out before the poll goes in, that's all. All set, Mr. Chairman. You sure? No. <laughs> that's okay, Jim. I gotta have some fun every now and then, Jim, sorry. Um, is there anybody out there from the public, Mr. Sagarino, that we know? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I haven't, I haven't received any phone calls. Okay. Uh, Mr. Priest, does your, does your boy want to say anything on this? Harris, did you have anything you want to add to this? Anything? He's all set? I'm sorry, no. I know it's a public forum, but there's nothing that he'd like to add this time. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Betty, do we have anybody? It's okay. You can stay. Betty, Betty, do we have anybody out there? Anybody else? Sorry, I had to get my my okay. my cursor back up. I don't have anything. Okay. Nope, Sorry. not a thing. So at this point, I'll need a motion to close the public hearing. So made. Motion by Bob, second, second. by Jimmy. Uh, roll call vote. Um, Mr. Priest. Yes. Uh, Mr. Tigakis. Yes. Mr. Runyon? Yes. Mr. Hogan? Yes. Mr. Mirandi? Yes. Okay. Now we need a motion on the article itself. Grant the location. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion that we approve the grant location, uh, Great Meadow Road uh, for, for Verizon, as listed in the uh, agenda. Motion by Jimmy, second by Bob. Second. Oh, yeah. you, gotta, you both had your hands up. Um, We'll do a roll call vote once again. Mr. Hogan? Yes. Mr. Runyon? Yes. Mr. Tigas? Yes. Mr. Priest? Yes. Miranda, yes. So 5 0 0 in favor. We're all set. Okay. Michael, thank you for your input. Uh, find out who's uh, who, who we call on that telephone poll. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Mr. Sagarino. Moving right along. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, next up, we have uh, our Economic Development Director, Melissa Tentakulis, uh to run a couple of ideas past the board and get some feedback from you. Melissa? Hi there. Good evening, everyone, board members, Hi, Chairman Mirandi. Thanks for having me. Um, and yes, congratulations, Selectman Runyon, to your retirement. That's exciting, new phase. Um, these are two discussion items. I'll start with the first one, which is a pilot park let on 3rd Avenue. So I had met with Nordblum um, representatives, three of them, to discuss 
um, tenancy and essentially, you know, kind of pandemic related implications with regard to customer foot traffic and trying to enliven the space over there in third, you know, along third Avenue. Um, so they had a few ideas um, around how to activate some of their existing spaces, green spaces. But one idea that we wanted to just kind of start to introduce would be trying to um, use the public right of way, maybe two to four parking spaces along um, Third Avenue at certain times of day um, and have that essentially programmed by the Nord Bloom Company to start to create more, I would say, events or things that kind of have fresh interest and in rotate. And the idea behind that would be it would complement the existing brick and mortar. So it wouldn't be in competition, but the idea is to bring in, you know, some new interest down that corridor. Um, and I wanted to, before we went down that road, kind of just run it by the selectmen in general to get a sense of how how that would be kind of received and any recommendations or further information you'd want to know to bring back a strong proposal. Thank you, Melissa. So let me get, um, understand that it's, it's the corridors is where they want to put stuff. And like, the, I think it's between, uh, um, where they, where they usually play the, uh, Corn game, right? Corn hole games. They play that. Right. The so along fire. the green, exactly. There's a green section between yeah. two of the restaurants. It would be the parking spaces in front of that. It would be two to three, and they would be essentially roped off. But the idea is not to dictate just one thing, just eating or just one food truck. The idea is to create like um, a designated area that different events rotate there, but we would, as the town, sanction some of the use of that public right of way. So it's a partnership between us as the town and Nordbloom to program different elements in that space. And the idea would be that we would come back to the Board of Selectmen with a couple of more defined proposals over the course of the year, but have a little bit of a plan for the next, well, let's say six months um, and different activities planned for this area on the street. Okay, so the only thing I'm confused with right now before I ask the board members, are we in the parking lot or are we in the street? So in the we back are the lot? parallel parking spaces on the street. Okay. Right. I think I was, I think I was, I was confused. You said three or four. Yeah. Three I mean, I think I had a long map. Long ways. Long right. Ways, right. Okay. I'm good. That's and I, I think, did. you know, for, you know, for the purposes of, you know, I think developing a better plan, we will have a map and we'll identify clearly which parking spaces would be used. Right. Um, but I think there was just maybe some, you know, some concern on Nor Bloom's part about whether we should, um, you know, invest time if the town board of selectmen didn't want to really see this to begin with. And I said, you know, said our crew was pretty open to new ideas. So I said we kind of at least start to talk about it and then go from there. Okay. I, th I think it's a good idea. I'm going to turn it over to the uh, uh, start with Mr. Hogan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Melissa and I had spoken uh, today about this. And uh, for those of you who remember, I was very protective of the uh, businesses in that area when a whole lot of al uh, alcohol licenses were being uh, presented and passed for the uh, for the mall. Uh, and I'm doing the same thing with this. Uh, I want to make sure that whatever we agree on, uh, it absolutely does not cause pain to any of the brick and mortar restaurants that are there now. And Melissa uh, talked about a couple of ideas that they had talked about. Uh, there's a woman that does, um, what are the cakes, uh, Melissa, that they did? Uh, oh, the whoopee wagon. Whoopee wagon, something like that, that there's probably no market for that area, you know, to come once a week or whatever the, the schedule is, where people could order and buy whoopee pies. Uh, so those kinds of things I'd be open to, but I'd be very cautious about opening up to, you know, if, if, a, a, a food truck came and sold Italian food and was right next to the Italian restaurant, I would be offended 
suggested if that would be the case, and I would uh, argue against something like that. But in general, uh, I see that this could this could work as long as we continue to get more information from Melissa. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Tigas. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I think anything that can help the businesses or areas during the time is great. Um, where it's going to be a, a rotating or different events or, or vendors coming in, it sounds like it's going to be a regular type of thing if it gets going. I would, I don't like a piece of rope blocking it. I would like something that is strong enough to, you know, potentially stop a vehicle or at least keep someone from trying to get into that. It may be cinder blocks. I don't necessarily mean Jersey barriers, but it's also going to be something that needs to be removed if it snows. So some sort of barrier that can protect that area, but could also be removed um, if needed. So that's that's what I'm thinking at this point, but that, I think that, the that's helpful. That's helpful. Okay, thank you, Jimmy. Uh, Michael. All right, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, okay, so it, it, the third half is a, is a is a public way. So that's, uh, Melissa, why I, I'm, I'm, I suppose you're, you're trying to get uh, the feel of the board before you proceed any further. So I, it sounds to me from what I've heard so far, um, I, I think the selectmen are in, in support of this with some, you know, obviously we'll need you know some further details as as you you know push the ball past the goal line here but uh certainly anything uh we can do to encourage um activity in that area uh, i think you've got you've certainly got my support and i believe uh, uh the rest of the board would be in agreement there thank you michael uh mr priest thank you mr chairman yeah you know uh melissa you know i think you know uh in our current working relationship you know that i'm more of a you know, this is a great idea. Let's proceed and deal with the the headaches as they come. Kind of an approach. Um, if it means you know bringing, especially in this case, bringing you know more business and foot traffic to uh, you know uh, obviously a very important uh, you know area of of our community. Um, I'm I'm very curious to see you know what the ideas come back. Uh, you know, and uh, very much looking forward to that. I had a couple just questions, thoughts, perhaps. Uh, yep. One, you know, maybe including. The brick and mortar folks in the in the rotation so you know if you know uh ninos wants to do something and you know they can kind of occupy that space you know for whatever uh you know if you know Wegmans wants to do a thing i mean i know they have all that space in the back if you know uh tony c's wants to do a thing i mean like whatever it is you know offer it to them as well so that it's not just uh you know other businesses only being able to capitalize on you know that I think it could be a nice way to kind of like help promote and keep that, you know, going. Um, you know, for brick and mortar and you know other folks alike. Um, considering that we're moving dead straight into winter, you know, testing this, you know, over the next six months might be a little tricky. So I'm mean, curious to see just from a logistics perspective how we're going to handle that with the mm -hmm. approaching. Um, if we're going to ask folks to stand outside, you know, and, and and things of that nature, and then just you know obviously bear in mind all the social distancing regulations that need to go into place to ensure that this is a safe, you know, parklet, uh, as we're calling it, which I think is is neat and, uh, you know, could be very interesting and hopefully very fruitful at the end of the day. But um, those are just some of the things that popped my mind as, as we were talking, so. No, that's great. That's helpful. That's exactly what I was looking for in terms of the feedback from the board. And I think the thing that's a little different with this, I mean, the idea is to come to the board with a proposal um, with something that's a little bit more ongoing versus um, a few one-off events for the space. So that way we have some kind of certainty for how we're programming it and how they can promote it. Um, definitely took notes on the recommendations on the cross promotion and opportunities for the brick and mortar and um, the Jersey barriers and protective, you know, pr protective barriers, um, especially in light of snow coming up. So that's very helpful and i think just to reiterate um 
it's in collaboration because Nord Bloom said that majority of their tenants have already received, you know, lease modifications just to, you know, kind of make make it through our current um, fiscal year. And they have been working in, in communication with them on ideas to do the promotion down the corridor. So, um, you know, I would expect that, you know, anything that's brought back to the board has been, you know, Will be have, will have been vetted and um, presented with the tenants themselves. Thank you, Melissa. Um, <clears throat> so that's the problem with going last. A lot of things have already been said, which is really good. The only thing I'm going to bring up is alcohol. Okay. Uh, I think alcohol might be an issue in that area if we allow somebody to um, come in there with a whatever. I, I, I don't even know whether it's a food truck or someone's coming in or <laughs> alcohol. How's it going to be served? That becomes another whole issue. Uh, maybe they can bring in some stuff for kids to do during the weekends uh, before, like a pump, small pumpkin patch. I don't know what they can do over there. Yep. Um, stuff Great. like that. Uh, apple cider and apple donuts given away, um, out there. There's a million different ideas, so I think you're on the right page. Um, uh, I think it was a good discussion. I think everybody brought up a great point. Uh, One quick question, Mr. Chairman, if I yes, could. Yes, sir. Uh, Melissa, who who would be keeping the schedule, and who would how would people know who to ask to be getting? Mike Warren, and he's retired. Um. It would be Nordblom at this point, as I understand it, because they would be providing the budget for the programming in the space. The way it's kind of a public private partnership is, you know, we're trying to support them through, you know, the approval and then, you know, we'd help to promote their activities, but they'd lead the um, kind of the calendar of events. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Paul, anything to add? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I don't have anything to add other than to say that um, a lot of other communities have experimented with parklets for a, a variety of different reasons. So if you Google it, there's a lot of good examples and some really cool ideas um, that are already in place in other communities. Thank you. Um, so there was a discussion. That was a good discussion. Melissa, do you have anything else on this one or do you want to uh, go to the are you on the next one too, Melissa? I am. Yeah, no, this is that is perfect. I can move on to the next item, um, which was okay, the use of town common. Excuse me, Melissa, one second. Paul, that yeah. can we just move to the next one? Okay, I didn't know if we had to close it out or something. Yeah, no, no decision needed at this time. I'll bring back a proposal and we can discuss Thank you. um for approval. The next item was the use of the town common and kind of generic vendor. In a similar kind of vein, we've had several, you know, kind of calls around using the town common or inviting, um, I guess it's mostly food vendors, uh, you know, food truck type places, um, but there have been a few mobile I would say retail vendors as well. Um, the flowers is a good example. Um, there's an art truck um, out there. And similarly, I don't know, this is maybe more of a recreation question, but um, using the common and trying to, again, program specific ideas, I was wondering where the town would come on that. So if we picked certain days that we knew we invited certain vendors or invited it for to open up to vendors if that would be something um the selectmen would consider um, um gentlemen we'll start with michael oh good i'm just in time <laughs> you know um for a few years there we had farmers markets in different locations we had up the center yeah, school yeah. for a while and then we we took it down to the town common um i personally uh, enjoyed that um i don't know how necessarily we could uh you know do the social distancing aspect of it but that's something i'd like to um maybe look at a little bit um and you know they're all vendors of course and um, maybe something like that might work if we could do it responsibly okay Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Actually, 
with this one in the past one too, um, we may still be under that restriction of no more than 50 people per time a moment at, a, at an event. Would something like this and the other thing fall under that event, like an outdoor event? And how would we make sure that we don't violate it? That that's a good question. Um, in terms of how we've worked with the Board of Health, um, there's a couple different ways to kind of pre-register for events or something like that. But we would go through the Board of Health for sure to make sure we're in in sync with the guidelines for the state. All right. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Priest. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so, Melissa, if you're if you're asking me about like a long-term you know policy where we allow vendors to help conduct events on the common then i think i'm in favor of it if we're talking about you know the next six months i think you know like everybody else we're going to have our covid related concerns um especially when you start talking about food and drink um you know and folks having to unmask to you know do that it just becomes really complicated and you know, like like Slepin Tigga said, you know, no more than 50 people, how we police that. Um, you know, in general, I, I do like the idea of, you know, um, utilizing the town common for, you know, maybe more event specific things that vendors can, can do, uh, you know, a beer garden, you know, when it's more appropriate to kind of have more folks in a gathering area, I think would be a, a stellar idea. I mean, we have such a beautiful, large common um, it is just a fantastic place. I mean, look, we've been hosting Chuck Dave there for how many years? We've been doing, you know, events there for how long? I mean, it's just, it's a, it's a great piece of real estate. It's, you know, um, it, it needs to be capitalized more on. And I think that this idea is definitely trying to get to that. Um, I think that, you know, the current state of affairs puts us in an awkward position where we have to get really creative with how we're going to do that. You know, so, you know, maybe we start with non food and drink related things or, you know, we ask folks to come and do like a takeout kind of a thing where they come and they, you know, kind of pick something up, um, you know, and then leave. Like, I just I get weary about the about the quantity of people um, and, and food and drink. But I think overall, big picture, 3000 foot view, it's a great idea. And we should definitely be looking, looking at it. So, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Bruce. Mr. Hogan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, I'm, I'm on this particular one. Um, I, I have a few questions um, that I that I won't have like for the uh, third half situation. Um, who are we doing this for? Just for the food trucks, or for people in town hall to buy lunch someplace so that they don't have to go far? Or um, is it just on weekends where people are out and about, and there's a reason to come to the common? Um, I would like to know, uh, you know, are, are we, again, who are we doing this for uh, is an important question. And I think we need to be careful because we do have a lot of things on the common um, and we do schedule things in advance, well in advance, yeah. that I would want us to make sure that whatever calendar we're using to schedule these things, these food uh, trucks or whatever, uh, is coordinated with whoever in town hall coordinates the other activities on the town common. Um, uh, so I'm I'm uh, I'm less enthusiastic about this particular one without those particular questions being answered. So uh, that's where I'm with that one, Melissa. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, I think they've all been said, Mr. Sagarino. Any comments? Any questions, Melissa? I know you work with her all day long, but. Anything else to add? Mr. Chairman, I don't have any additional uh, uh, comments. I think Melissa was just wanting to get some uh, preliminary feedback from the board before she just to sort of guide her uh, on her on her future discussions. Okay, great. Melissa, did you get all the information you were looking for? Yeah, no, this was helpful. Great input. Thank you. Okay. Um, all I'm going to say right now is the fact that uh, we, I think we do anyway. I know I do. I personally enjoy your emails about what's been going on. That's uh, very helpful, very uh, in, intuitive for us to uh, listen to what you have to say, or what's going on in town. It helps a lot. Great. So thank you. Great job on that. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. All right. Um, I think we're all set, right? Any more questions, Melissa? Um, no, this is, this is great. Thank you so much. Okay. All right. Thank you.
Uh, Paul, uh, let's move on to the Warren articles, I believe. Uh, next up, we just wanted to provide a budget update, uh, Mr. Oh, Chairman. Uh, yeah, I skipped uh, So uh, we have our Assistant Town Administrator, John Denisio here to discuss uh, the budget reductions that are necessary to achieve a balanced budget. Uh, I know the board had an opportunity to review these at our last meeting. Uh, John can answer any further questions you may have. Uh, at this time, I'd like to thank John and Whitney for all the work they've done on this very difficult endeavor. Uh, and also a big thank you to all the departments, uh, including the schools uh, who have worked with us to develop uh, this list of cuts. Uh, it's not an enjoyable task. And unfortunately, uh, this, this may only be the beginning. Uh, as in October, uh, you know, we'll be begin the discussion on spending guidelines for fiscal year 2022. Uh, which is already shaping up to be a challenging budget year for cities and towns. Uh, so with that, I'll turn it over to John and open it up to any additional questions the board may have since our last meeting. Thank you, Mr. Sagarino. Mr. D. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so you, I'll just quickly go over what we're talking about here again. Um, so you may remember at, at June town meeting, we talked about let's let's pass the budget as it was submitted Let's wait till we get some more information and let's review that at September town meeting when we have a chance to uh, absorb some of that information and make uh, data driven decisions. And uh, fortunately, we, we did receive some good information in the area of state aid. The state was able to hold local aid harmless this year, which is, a, which is good news for us. And, and in our worst case scenarios, we were looking at potentially a $2 million cut for that. Uh, so that was good news. Uh, on the other side, with local receipts, it's, it, it hasn't been good news. Um, it hasn't been as bad as we thought, but it's 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 still pretty bad. Uh, so we're we're coming here uh, needing to adjust local receipts down by about two mil two point one million dollars. So we've worked hard with all the departments to to try to see okay what can we cut that will have a li least effect on services, least effect on programs, and a least effect on actual employees and jobs now. And we think we did that. We we were able to to look at accommodated accounts and cover about two thirds of that, two point one million dollars through accommodated accounts, uh, through proposals like not funding all of the uh, OPEB for this year, uh, for, to to make some reductions in debt service and insurance lines, and and then it came that left us with a seven thousand uh, seven hundred thousand dollar number that we uh, are hoping to split between schools and towns. We went through all the departments. You've seen the list of the cuts at each department. Uh, just about everybody's feeling some pain, uh, but I think everybody is uh, knows that the pain we we potentially are going to feel this winter when we're setting our spending guidelines for next year uh, could be uh, more significant. So uh, I, I want to, like Paul did, I want to thank everybody for being a good team player in this, and uh, all the department heads uh, really stepped up and and took a took a look at their budgets and and. Um, you know, felt like they could handle the, the cuts we're talking about now, and and uh, they're getting a head start and prepping for potentially looking at some cuts for next year too. Uh, so I know you have the list in front of you, and uh, we'll be meeting. Paul and I will be meeting with uh, um, Ways and Means next week, and doing some subcommittee meetings for the departments that will be affected by this. Uh, but we're looking for some support on the plan, uh, and happy to answer any questions you have on the plan. Thank you very Thank you. much, John. Um, let's stop, Mr. Holden. Any questions? Uh, no, I spoke with uh, John and Paul earlier today, and uh, they clarified a few of the things that I was uh, concerned about. And uh, a lot of it had to do with, you know, looking at the numbers and you know where it's all coming and how it all balances out with the school. So I'm good. Okay, thank you, Mr. Priest. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I don't think I have any questions per se, uh, but you know, I think. Folks need to understand that you know we're we're up against a you know we're, we're jammed between a rock and a hard place. Um, you know, obviously um, we've asked all the departments, including the schools, to dig deep into their budgets. Um, you know, and make cuts where possible, which is obviously very difficult. Given that you know, I think um, a lot of departments, you know, uh, are, are up in their you know services uh, requests, trying to make sure that uh, everyone is uh, receiving the services that they. You know, not only are looking for, but that they need uh, in a lot of cases. 
Um, and, you know, I, I've heard from a lot of folks, you know, that just kind of, well, not a lot of folks, I shouldn't say that. Um, but, you know, I've heard from a couple of folks who say, well, then let's just raise the taxes, which of course is a red flag and alarms and, you know, uh, you know, multiple people are called and a red phone rings and with a glass case over it. Um, you know, and we're trying to be very, very cautious about how we approach that. Um, you know, I think that, you know, with the unemployment rate still being high and business not doing well, um, it's, you know, I think raising taxes is, and I'm not speaking to the whole board here, but in my opinion, is the last resort. Um, you know, and uh, I just want to thank John and Whitney and, and Paul and everybody, even, you know, Melissa for doing everything that, you know, they can in their power, uh, all the department heads for, you know, uh, making the cuts they're making, uh, try to make this work. Um, you know, making up $2.1 million is not an easy thing to do. Um, you know, and we are we are doing our, our darndest to, you know, make it all work and maintain the level of services we have here in town. So uh, I just kind of wanted to say that out loud for anyone who's watching uh, that, you know, we are not taking this lightly. This is a very serious, you know, concern that we're all trying to deal with. Um, and that, you know, once you pull, you know, one, uh, you know, uh, card, the whole house, it's a little bit weaker. So, um, you know, please bear with us. If you have ideas, <laughs> send them to Paul, um, you know, and, you know, just, uh, we're just going to keep trucking along and trying to get through this, you know, for as long as it lasts. So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Nick. Uh, Mr. Hogan. No, you've already passed me. Okay. Mr. Tigas. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I just want to thank John Whitney and the rest of the financial team that we have, because, you know, once again, they, they've, pulled through for us again, but um, the information that I got at the last meeting, pretty much, uh, it, I, I don't think I have any questions because that information was sufficient for me to, to uh, you know, take this all in, but I, I'm good with questions. Thank you, Mr. Runyon. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, you know, I, I, I think the fact that uh, we're able to trim uh, more than two million dollars uh, from our operating budget, existing operating budget is is kind of a, a, a testament to our uh, prudent and careful financial planning over over previous years. Um, I have, have some some very real concerns. Um, going forward into the next fiscal year. Uh, I think there's some some there's more meat on the bone that, that uh, I think we're gonna we're gonna have to trim. Uh, the, the the fact that we can um, you know take this this 2.1 million for you know for the remainder of the fiscal year and keep our, our heads above water is is certainly a good thing. Uh, but I think we're gonna have to be ever vigilant and um, I, I just want the the, the folks uh, who, who may be listening to know that um, we, we are working very hard to uh, avoid any 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 layoffs or or reduction in services, and uh, the, we've ad adopted some some sound uh, policies in terms of uh, scaling back uh, some of our. Uh, um, uh, folks here uh, in town, maybe not filling some some vacancies and so forth that we have, but um, there's some concern going forward. Uh, I'm here to uh, tonight, though, to support the uh, the 2.1 million dollars in proposed budget cuts for a September town meeting. Okay, thank you, um, Joe. And, uh, just thank you and your staff uh, for everything uh, that we've come across in the, in the past 20 minutes on this. What we read over the uh, all the budget cuts. Uh, that's a great work. So um, that's why we hired you guys. You, Sagarino, Whitney, Betty. That's why you're here. Doing a great job. Thank you. Um, at this point, I'm going to need a motion to approve this. So I need a motion and a second. Jimmy? Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion. We approve uh, the updated budget with the 2.1 million uh, in cuts, so to speak, that we've been discussing that has been presented to us. Thank you. Uh, Michael, you had your hand up. Michael, Jimmy and Mike. Okay, gentlemen, we'll go to a roll call vote. Mr. Hogan? Yes. 
Uh, Mr. Runyon? Yes. Mr. Tigas? Jim? Yes. Mr. Priest? Yes. Ms. Miranda, yes. There you go, Joan. We're all set. Five zero zero bidding. Okay. Um, Mr. Sagarino. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, for this agenda item, I'll, I'll defer to Selectman Hogan on this one. Uh, he had brought it to our attention, and uh, I'll let him speak on it. Uh, is this a proclamation? Yes. Okay. Um, we're we're going to postpone this to our next meeting on the 28th, I think it is. Um, and it's a young lady who uh, is a resident in town and has done extraordinary things within the Civil Air Patrol and has been uh, given some awards and we're going to give a proclamation to her. Um, but we're going to do that on the 28th. Um, and uh, for those of you who aren't familiar, we'll also uh, do a, a brief explanation of what the Civil Air Patrol is. Uh, it's quite a unique situation uh, for young people and uh, a, a number of young people in Burlington have gone through it and had uh, very successful careers, uh, both in the military and in the government work uh, because of uh, what they learned on the Civil Air Patrol. So we'll be doing that on the 28th. Uh, uh, it'll be a proclamation that we'll give to the young lady. Thank you, Bob. Appreciate it. Mr. Sagarino. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, next up, we have uh, an update on town meeting. I do have a motion uh, that I will ask uh, the board to approve, and I would like uh, the board to take a vote on a couple of individual warrant articles. Uh, but just as an overall update, uh, I've met with uh, the town clerk and our town moderator. They're working very hard uh, to put together uh, what is will be a mostly virtual uh, town meeting. Uh, for our September town meeting, uh, they will be making uh, accommodations for those of, those of our members that that may not have the ability uh, to log in from a computer. So there will be a, a little bit of a live component to it as well. I know that um, Amy has already begun sending out emails. They're going to do some testing. Uh, there will be some test town meetings. So by all means, um, in order to properly test the system, you know, please log on. I think it's going to be and coming upon all of us to sort of test it out, become familiar um, with how they want to run it, and just to make sure that our computer uh, network and everything can sort of handle it. But that's uh, the plan at this time. Uh, a lot of the thought process was, I think we would all agree, September's a pretty good month uh, to have something outdoors typically, uh, but certainly uh, January is not. So that's when our next town meeting is. So I think, um, from Amy and Bill's perspective, it was really important to try to come up with uh, something that sort of we could use going forward uh, in the event um, that we need to continue to have town meetings in this way. So that's just a little bit of an update to the board. I do have a, a letter here uh, from the from the moderator, and uh, he it does require a board's vote uh, per town council to do this. So I'm not sure if anybody has the motion. If not, I can certainly read it uh, into the record. And then uh, we can follow up on some of the individual articles. Does anybody have that uh, readily available? I do not. All right, why don't I read it? And then um, uh, one of the board members can uh, make the motion. Thank you, Paul. Uh, what this is referred to is a remote town meeting and notice uh, in accordance with section eight of chapter 92 of the acts of 2020. I move that the Board of Selectmen approve the town moderator's request to hold the September 30th, 2020 town meeting remotely and issue the required notice for the same, which has been drafted in, con in consultation with the town moderator. Thank you. I need a motion on that, gentlemen. So moved. I'll make the motion, Mr. Chairman, that we support the letter about uh, uh, Red. Thank you, Bob. And second by Jim. Thank you. Uh, roll call vote on this, please. Uh, Mr. Hogan? Yes. Mr. Runyon? Yes. Mr. Tiggis? Yes. Mr. Priest? Yes. Myself? Yes. Did I miss somebody? No. Okay. Thank you, guys. 500 zero zero in favor.
Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And next up, there were a couple of individual articles on the warrant that we would uh, request that the board take a position on. Uh, the first one is uh, Article 4 to amend uh, the fiscal year 2021 operating budget. Uh, that is simply would be uh, the reductions in budgets that we just talked about on our previous agenda item. So if I could get a, a vote from the board um, on this article. I make a motion to approve by four. Motion by Bob, second by Jimmy. We'll do a roll call vote. Mr. Priest? Yes. Mr. Tiggis? Yes. Mr. Runyon? Yes. Mr. Hogan? Yes. Mr. Miranda? Yes. No set there. Five zero zero. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And and the next one I would request that the board uh, provide us a vote on is Article Six, uh, one four dioxane legal action funding. Uh, as the board is aware, we've been updating you um, in terms of our negotiations uh, with the responsible parties in terms of the water issue that took down uh, our wells at the Vinebrook. Um, at this point in time, we are continuing negotiations and we are hopeful. Uh, to have some sort of resolution to that. But at this point in time, we are requesting uh, some additional legal funding um, in the event that we need to uh, pers pers pursue a different track uh, aside from negotiation. Is there a Thank number you. on that, Paul? Uh, the number in the warrant is 100,000. And that is, again, if, if, if this were to turn into uh, litigation, I would imagine that that is not uh, enough of a sum of money to cover the full cost of it, but it is enough to uh, begin the process. Thank you. Any more questions, Mr. Runyon? No, Mr. Tiggis? Yes, uh, Paul, what would the source of that money cup be? At this point in time, uh, Selectman Tiggis, uh, the only funding sources we have available are raise and appropriate or a transfer from stabilization fund. So we will work with um, the Ways and Means Committee to determine uh, what they feel is the most appropriate uh, source. Uh, we had a meeting with the subcommittee today and they had some ideas as well. So we're not uh, too particular on the funding source, uh, more so on the, the actual uh, ability to utilize that, those funds. So we're happy with whatever uh, funding mechanism they may can come up with. All right, thank you, um, Mr. Zegler. Thank you, That's right. Mr. Priest. No, sir. Thank you. No, sir. Okay, thank you. Uh, can I get a motion? $100,000 funding. Motion by Bob, second by Jim. A roll call vote. Mr. Hogan? Yes. Mr. Runyon? Yes. Mr. Tiggis? Yes. Mr. Priest? Yes. Mr. Miranda? Yes. Here we go. Thank you. Five zero zero. And just lastly, as relates to the warrant, Mr. Chairman, uh, the board doesn't typically take a position on the zoning articles, uh, but we do have another meeting uh, prior to town meeting. So uh, please review your warrant and see if there's any other uh, articles that you feel as though the board may want to weigh in on, and we can uh, take those up uh, at our meeting on the 28th. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, we're all set there. So next is the approvals for the minutes, Paul. Right? Yes, sir. Betty, would you like us to approve them all at once, or would you like us to approve them individually? I'd like you to approve just July 20th, period. Just July 20th, not yes. August 10th or June 22nd? That's correct. Okay, gentlemen, can I have a motion on July 20th, please? So moved. So moved. Second. Second. Um, uh, roll call vote. I'm sorry, uh, Mr. Hogan. Yes, Mr. Runyon. Yes, Mr. Tiggis. Yes, Mr. Priest. Yes, Mr. Miranda. Yes, hey, Betty. Let's go right with subcommittee reports. Um, Mr. Hogan, none tonight, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Runyon. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. A couple notes from uh, COA. Uh, COA uh, recently took delivery of their new van. Uh, it's uh, out and about doing doing their thing, uh, although it limited, um, obviously due to the COVID. Uh, I just wanted to point out that we did receive a mass uh, DOT grant 
uh, of forty thousand dollars to help us uh, uh, make that purchase of the van. Uh, secondly, the parking lot. I think uh, I think it was Mr. Sanchez recently sent us all an email with some photographs. Uh, parking lot is complete. Uh, it looks great up there. The grass is growing. Uh, the, the lighting is is, is outstanding. Uh, we, um, you know, obviously it, it's adequate for the time being under the circumstances. Let's hope it's going to um, serve its purpose. Uh, you know, going forward after after all this other. Uh, businesses behind us. Uh, you guys might recall I, I sent a little email around to you uh, noting that the uh, uh, MMA is uh, not accepting uh, uh, nominations for the annual report this year. Um, uh, 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 after I sent that email uh, around, Mr. Uh, Denizio sent me a, a note suggesting that perhaps the um, uh, the rideshare program that the COA has uh, adopted this year, the lift program, uh, you know, as we eliminate the, the, the B-line service, might be an, an appropriate um, uh, subject, uh, you know, to submit uh, for, for consideration for that innovation award. So I, I forwarded that to Marge, and she's going to be filling it out and um, sending it uh, Paul's way for, for a signature. Uh, and, and lastly, um, uh, sadly, um, the latest victim of the, the COVID-19 era uh, is the Burlington Area Chamber of Commerce. Um, they have ceased doing business uh, for now, and and I, I, I can only hope that they're going to be uh, back in business at, at, at some point in the near future. Um, I want to take this opportunity to recognize Rick Parker uh, for all of his work, uh, not only with the Chamber of Commerce, but for everything he does over the years uh, here in Burlington. I mean, this guy eats, sleeps, and breathes Burlington. Um, I, I, I only wish we had more uh, folks in town that uh, were as enthusiastic uh, about this community as, as Rick Parker is. Uh, so I want to Rick, uh, thank Rick for um, a, a job well done done with the the, the chamber. Uh, he, you know he continues to be part of this community. I wish him well in in, in future endeavors. Uh, I also want to thank uh, the staff, Katie O'Connor and Debbie Patterson, um, who've who've put in a lot of time alongside Rick uh, over the years. So uh, sad to say, but. Um, Again, a victim of, of COVID-19, but I, I certainly hope, and I'm sure you all uh, would agree with me that uh, the, the Burlington Area Chamber of Commerce has been a huge asset to the community. We all had a good working relationship with those folks, and uh, let's just hope that uh, uh, we'll, we'll be seeing them back in business real soon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Michael. Uh, Mr. Tiggis. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Select Maranian, you mentioned that Rick Parker eats, sleeps, and drinks Burlington, but he also lives on Burlington Street in Burlington, so he's he's covered all the bases there. Um, not really. Well, apparently, it's a new subcommittee. Selectman Priest and I will be trying to address the issue of Halloween. Well, the town will be trying to address the issue of Halloween. It's uh, next month. But a lot is uh, contingent upon what the state guidelines are and aren't. Uh, I've already met with Susan Lucello, uh, our Board of Health uh, Director, and you know we talked about Thank you. traditional health if it's allowed. So again, this is all if if it's allowed, if traditional Halloween is allowed, how do we approach that? If non-traditional or modified. Uh, approach to Halloween is allowed. How are we going to approach that? Um, I'll be uh, actually, and, and Nick will probably be joining me Wednesday to, to discuss uh, this with Brendan and Kelly so that if a non traditional or modified Halloween or trick or treating is allowed, is there something the town can do, we as a town um, can do to offer some sort of event or, or normalcy for children in town? So uh, a lot, again, a lot depends on what we can and can't do. 
We have to go by COVID, guide, uh, COVID guidelines and things that we discussed, Sue and I discussed were, you know, about using multiple locations, timed, uh, timed times that kids can go, whether a drive-through uh, trick-or-treating around the high school would work or even a drive-through haunted house. So there's so many things that we've talked about. Sue is gonna be checking with the state every week to see if there is an update, but I'm sure the, uh, they, got, they will issue guidelines that obviously we have to comply with. Um, but one just side note or, or byproduct of that discussion with Sue was, I know we had a Halloween a few years ago where it was a blizzard. And she asked me the question of who decides to cancel Halloween or similar events? And I said, I don't know. So just something for us to think about down the road, who decides to cancel or postpone, say, Halloween. But uh, Nick and I will be working with Florida Health uh, Rec Department and see if, again, if it's allowed, we'll do this. If it's not allowed or certain things are allowed, then we'll work to try to give uh, the children in this town, you know, some sort of trick or treat or Halloween to the best of our ability. So it's not really a subcommittee report, but on the, the, these days, apparently it, it's it's because things like this are going to be subcommittees because we have to try to figure out what we can and can't do. So I'll just stop right there. Mr. Chair, I would recommend that we let Paul Sagarino be the bad guy if we have to cancel. Uh, <laughs> I'll never cancel it, Bob. So, um... <laughs> Mr. Priest. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, hopefully, uh, some quick updates here. I know it's, uh, I tend to belabor points, but uh, I'll, I'll do my best. Um, so ISAC, we are currently uh, looking at uh, what the AG uh, approved from the uh, last town meeting to ensure that the new uh, standing uh, board uh, has all the proper seats filled. So I'll be reporting back on the 28th, uh, the standing on that. Uh, just obviously, uh, you know, Melissa was here earlier this evening. Uh, she's working very hard um, to find uh, ways where we can continue to uh, boost economic development here in town. Um, you know, I mean, literally no stone unturned. She's she's just doing a wonderful job. Um, uh, she is uh, putting together a uh, panel discussion with ULI, which is the Urban Land Institute, for ways we can begin to uh, broach conversations with, uh, um, you know, folks down the Middlesex Turnpike area, you know, as we you know, look at ways where, uh, you know, property may either need to be you know, uh, it might not be, you know, sustaining based on what's going on or, you know, businesses choose to uh, remain remote, uh, which is obviously a huge concern moving forward. Um, so we're just, you know, she's uh, she's at the forefront of basically everything. And I believe that we were approved for the micro grants, which is, which is great news. Um, uh, let's see, we uh, just recently opened a double new, new subcommittees, diversity subcommittee that uh, we'll be putting together over the next couple of weeks, uh, talking with the schools, as they have their own diversity committee as well, uh, looking for ways we can continue to, uh, you know, be open-minded and, and transparent here in town. Um, Sculpture Park. Uh, so as you all saw, uh, we've got we've got everything in almost. Um, so just two quick updates there. Uh, the last sculpture, which is a giant pair of cherries, uh, will be joining us hopefully sometime in September. There was some shipping concerns there, but uh, I just heard word today that we'll be getting those in. And uh, there is, in fact, a um, those who haven't seen it, a, uh, a a poll competition to name the big dog. Um, so, you know, if you folks haven't been over to uh, the uh, Sculpture Park uh, Facebook page or uh, on social media, I believe you can you can submit a name for the dog. And uh, we are currently in the works for that. Um, the dog has been a huge hit. The, the park's been a great hit thus far. We've seen a lot of great. Uh, foot traffic and you know folks posting pictures and um, you know I believe there was an article that was done not too long ago about it as well um, that uh, John Sachs had sent out to follow along to everybody um, so it's just great stuff. Um, lastly, I just want to mention uh, you know with everyone you know heading back to school uh, last week and this week uh, you know just a huge thank you to uh, you know all the teachers and the parents and everybody who is you know picking in. Uh, you know, if there's one thing that going back to school in a pandemic has shown me, it's truly how strong a community can be. 
Um, you know, we've got teachers making, you know, back to school uh, rap videos. We've got, you know, uh, you know, people making desks for kids who are doing remote learning, folks who are supplying, you know, uh, supplies and equipment to kids, um, you know, kids from, you know, preschool on up wearing masks, you know, in school, which is, you know, obviously, you know, if you've ever dealt with a three or four year old, getting them to do anything, they won't wear a mask, um, you know, it's just like pulling teeth. Um, so there's a huge, huge thank you to everyone in the community for, uh, you know, really pitching in and making this work. Um, you know, it's um, it's a lot of work to get the kids back in school. It's a lot of work to keep the kids home or remote. So uh, just, a, just a huge, huge thank you. Um, but that is uh, everything for me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Priest. Um, so real quick, Chairman's report. Um, not too much to say, just uh, two quick items. The first item is going to be uh, in a couple weeks uh, for the landlocked forest, you will see uh, hunters uh, coming in and out with tree stands. Just to let the people know it's uh, coming up this weekend. They're going to have to pass a proficiency test, which I run, and hopefully uh, they pass. If they don't, they won't get a permit uh, through the town. Or um, So as of Monday, you might see some people over there carrying tree stands in and out of the woods. Uh, so that's that note. Um, uh, on another note, we had uh, a death here in Burlington of uh, Richard Joseph Hannaford. Uh, most of you might know him as Dick Hannaford. Um, he's a retired MDC uh, police officer. Uh, his boys, uh, you know, uh, with the police department and the fire department. His daughter, Eileen, she works for the fire department. Uh, related to Jack Farron's father-in-law, uh, 12 grandchildren, four great-grandchildren. Um, uh, he was a great guy. I can't say enough about the man. He, he was he was quite the customer in the barber shop. Uh, I got to know the family very well. Uh, being Jack Farron's uh, best man at his wedding, um, so Dick was a very very great respected man in town. Um, and that's without getting into too much. I just want to take a second and share my thoughts and my prayers for the Hannaford family on the loss of uh, Richard. So thank you for letting me say that, gentlemen. Um, that's all I have. Um, Sag, uh, anything on the... Um, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just had a couple, couple of updates on, just an update to uh, Selectman Runyon's uh, comments on the chamber. Uh, I'd like to re reiterate uh, everything he said and, and, and thanking uh, Rick Parker. Uh, I do want to point out that the chamber is still uh, functioning. It'll be run uh, by the board of directors. Uh, obviously, a uh, very difficult task for them to undertake now without Rick's assistance. Uh, so they, were, they unfortunately had to make the decision to furlough the full-time employees, uh, but they are still a chamber. Uh, so they'll, they'll still be uh, keeping that going um, under the direction of the board of directors. Uh, second one, just to sort of dovetail on selecting priest. Uh, Melissa had updated us on the micro uh, enterprise grants. Uh, it's a really great program. Uh, please do, if you are a small business owner in town uh, with five or less employees, uh, please do check out the qualifications for the program. Uh, we're actively uh, seeking small business owners in town to, to take a look at that and see if you may be eligible for a grant. Uh, to help out uh, due to COVID related issues. So uh, if anybody's watching, please reach out to Melissa uh, in my office, I'm Melissa Tentaculous. Um, and the next thing I just wanted to bring up is I just wanted to say thank you to uh, Superintendent Conti and the school department. Uh, I'm, not, I'm pretty sure probably not everybody's happy with a reopening plan. It doesn't seem like uh, in any community we've been able to satisfy um, all the constituents, but I just want to thank them for all the work and effort that they put into that. Uh, it's a monumental task and it, it was a tremendous amount of work. I can only imagine. And I just would like to thank them uh, for all their efforts in, in, in terms of getting our students back, uh, back to school. Uh, dovetail on that, uh, that couldn't have been done without the tremendous effort of the Board of Health. Uh, we should honestly thank them every single meeting we have. Um, I can't even begin to tell you how helpful the board has been and literally every uh, COVID decision that we have here in town, whether it relates to the business community, whether it relates to our own town uh, operations, 
uh, we run through Susan Luminello. And I can't tell you how uh, thankful uh, we are to have them and how lucky we are to have um, them working with us on this. Uh, last last item, uh, Mr. Chairman, and I know it's um, of interest to all of you, all of you board members. Uh, we're working really hard to get you guys back into the meeting room. Um, as you know, we do have um, some employees working there so that they can be properly spaced. Uh, but we do think that we have a plan uh, so that we can at least begin to have the selectmen together in the meeting room to have a meeting. Uh, maybe not open to the public yet, but. Um, I know that uh, it was of interest to all of you to sort of get back in the same room together, uh, holding these meetings. So uh, we hope to have something for you by your October meeting at the latest, um, possibly sooner. That's all Good I have, time. Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, gentlemen, motion? Hey. Second? Motion. Yeah. And a second to adjourn. Mike's raising his hand. Uh, roll call vote. All those in favor? Mr. Hogan? Yes. Mr. Tiggis? Yes. Mr. Priest? Yes. Mr. Runyon? Yes. Mr. Morandi? Yes. Gentlemen, have a great night. Thank you very much. Good night, everybody. Thanks, everybody.